Hey everybody, what's going on? Trey Griggs here with Beta Consulting Group. Look at that, we got a new countdown timer intro to the show. Very excited about that. Shout out to our creative department for putting that together. Uh, love that. Welcome to episode 72 of Standing Out, a daily podcast about sales, marketing, and leadership powered by Beta Consulting Group. Do me a favor, run over to betaconsultinggroup.com and check out what we're doing for companies with their branding, their messaging, their content creation, social media management, podcasting, whatever they want to do to help build their brand. We're all about helping them come up with that and manage that for them. So uh, check out the website, fill out a form, we'll reach out to you and we'll get started. We'd love to work with you and help you build your brand out there in the marketplace. Also, quick shout out to our sponsor, Tafts. These are the good guys in freight factoring. They're helping companies make sure that uh, actually carriers, asset-based companies, owner operators, make sure that they have all the resources that they need uh, to thrive in any market, making sure that they understand how to best use capital and uh, have discounts on fuels and tires and uh, fuel and tires, all those kind of things. And so if you're a carrier, if you have a truck, check them out at tafts.com or click on the link that Morgan's going to put into the comments in the show today. That goes directly to my landing page with Tafts so they know that I sent you. And also, if you're a broker, think about becoming a referral partner to make sure that your carriers have all the resources they need to thrive and continue moving your freight the guys over at Tafts.com. All right, so we have had a great week of shows this week. It's been a blast. Had a ton of fun, uh, and both in, in Florida. Had the mashup with Chris Jolly on Monday down in Florida at the TMSA conference where he spoke. I got to MC, which was really cool. On Tuesday, we did a walking podcast with Holly Laboda. First time I've ever done that. She was awesome. We walked around the Gaylord Palms, which was a beautiful facility. We had a great time talking about her career at Luminaries Consulting with C.H. Robinson. She's now a sales consultant. Yesterday, I had a great chat with Chris Torrance, talked about the startup life and kind of what he's experienced in his uh, journey. Today, my good friend Rich Hankins is going to come on the show here in a little bit. We're going to talk about his journey. And then tomorrow, my good friend Dan McCann, the founder and CEO of SimTrain, is going to be on. And he's doing some really cool stuff around training. You know, the number one reason that em employees don't make it at a company is for poor onboarding and poor training. So excited about that episode tomorrow to talk about what he's doing there and his journey in his career. So a lot of good things coming up. Also, it's almost Friday, which means that tomorrow we've got uh, episode 110 of The Word on the Street with special guest Grace Sharkey is going to be on the show. That's very exciting. And then that leads us to the weekend. And of course, Monday, we're going to have Iron Minds on Monday morning at 6 a.m. So a lot of good things coming up. Be sure to follow uh, and like so that you'll see every time that we go live with an episode with a great guest, a lot of really good things happening. And the last thing I want to mention is we're getting close. It's not close, but four months away from the inaugural Iron Minds Tough Mudder Charity Challenge. We're going to be giving out more information about that coming up really soon. That's going to take place October 29th down in Granbury, Texas, just outside of Fort Worth, Texas, in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Um, it's going to be awesome. We're looking for a team of 15 to 20 people who are up for, up for doing that. We've got the 9-mile 30 obstacle challenge. There's also a, a 3-mile challenge as well with about 10 to 15 obstacles. So a couple of options there. We're going to be raising money for an organization called Souk Strong. That's right here in St. Louis. What they do is they provide funds for ALS patients. Now, if you know anything about ALS, what that means is they're providing end-of-life funds because there's a lot of services that go on when you're uh, diagnosed with ALS um, that insurance doesn't cover. Different amenities, different modifications to homes and, and cars and all the things that are required for end-of-life services. And so they're helping uh, individuals who are diagnosed with ALS to have a quality end-of-life as much as possible. It's a terrible disease. We're very excited to be helping out with that. Our goal is to raise $10,000 to give to them. Um, and what they do is they, they give that money directly to a patient here in ALS to several patients or to one, depending on, on the money that they have to help them with those end of, uh, uh, end of life services. So we hope you'll join us in that. We'll have more information about how to donate coming up really soon. So be on the lookout for that. Okay. That was a lot of information today. All apologies on that. Very excited about uh, having this next guest on the show. He is an entrepreneur who is a newer entrepreneur, but, but a, kind of like a, a serial entrepreneur. We're going to talk about his journeys through creating companies and, and what he does with data. So please welcome to the show my good friend, Rich Hankins. Rich, what's up, man? How you doing? Hey, good. How about you, Trey? How's it going? Well, good. You might not be a new entrepreneur. That's probably the wrong word, but you're definitely a serial entrepreneur. You like to start things. You like to build things. I do so, like to build things. And yeah. uh, we have a, a couple that are going on right now that we're trying to get out there so I can get on with the next ones that we still have uh, <laughs> in the old brain there. Because <laughs> the truth is when you're a creator, when you're an entrepreneur, the ideas don't stop. 
you know, they, they keep coming, right. And you got to find an outlet to do to those things. And, and so you try to build something that's really you know high quality and sustainable. And then there's another idea that you kind of want to see if you can make that happen as well. And that seems to be kind of how your career has gone so far. It actually is. So, um, I guess a little bit about me. Uh, hi, everybody. Rich Hankins. And Trey just mentioned uh, the, the fundraiser that he's doing. It's actually in my town, Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, Granberry's not too far from there. So really looking forward to uh, getting you to Texas. Hopefully you can have some yeah. uh, good barbecue for a change. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <say> Rich. <laughs> oh, Rich. See, what Rich knows is I'm from, I'm from St. Louis and originally from Kansas City, Missouri. So barbecue is a big deal up here as well, my friend. Uh, we have to have uh, a yeah. competition. I understand. That's why I had to mention it. I actually, uh, one of the things about me is I have a small competition team. So uh, definitely enjoy the the smoke and the meat. Yeah, I know. Well, we might have to do some sort of partnership or maybe you can provide, uh, you know, some, some great barbecue for those of us that come into town for the Tough Mudder. Maybe we can work something out. That would be pretty fun to uh, enjoy, uh, you know, some of some of the things that you're, you're creating. So we'll, we'll see about great. that. Yeah, that'll be fun. Okay. So Rich, talk to everybody a little bit about what you're working on now and what you have you know, worked on uh, you know, in the past. What are some of the, the things that, uh, that you got going on? So what uh, we have going on at the moment is I actually have uh, a company called Simply Data and really data in, uh, cloud-based. And I guess about two years ago, I have a good friend of mine who is an asset-based carrier out of Fort Worth who wanted a mobile app. And uh, once I kind of explained a little bit about the world of mobile apps and hosting it yourself, uh, he jumped out on that one quick. <laughs> so we wound up doing our due diligence on it and seeing the market need for basically the, the, the functions that he needed. Yeah. And I love the fact that you're working on like working with companies and helping them solve issues. Uh, I mean, that's, that's awesome that you're, you're not just building technology just because you think it's a good idea, but you're actually listening to somebody and what they want. That's uh, actually one of the first steps when we go to build any technology is not starting with a solution, starting with a problem. Yeah, I mean, it's critical because, again, you can have a good idea of what you think somebody might actually want to use. But if you don't actually have a use case for it, um, it could be kind of a pie in the sky. There's very few people out there, uh, you know, and I'm not going to assume that you are or aren't, but there's very few people out there that can tell the market what it wants. You know, like I think Job, Steve Jobs was able to do that. He kind of knew what people wanted before maybe they knew what they wanted. He knew that we would want this device right here before we ever thought we would would want that. And there's few people that can do that. Everybody else, it's so great to start with a problem, with a customer, figure out what that is, and then, you know, build a solution uh, that will hopefully solve that problem, you know, and that just makes a ton of sense. So talk to me for a minute because your background is data governance. First of all, tell everybody what is data governance? What What is that? What are you talking about when we, when we talk about that? So originally, uh, it's funny you brought up the, the phone there. I worked for Nokia back when that was actually a thing. <laughs> that is dating yourself, my friend. I, I think I just did. But, uh, you know, back in those days, uh, I was doing consulting uh, work as well at the end of my Nokia career in a company uh, in a, on a platform called SAP. So... That's a massive platform for running a global business. Huge, yeah. And after 20 years of doing this in the data side of things, I uh, really started looking at, okay, how could I take this knowledge of data uh, that I've used on all these implementations and apply it to potential solutions that would solve problems uh, with the intent of having software work and me, me building a company as opposed to me working <laughs> with all the data all the time, road warrior project to project kind of thing. Yeah. And data governance is really about data integrity uh, and how data flows, you know, what, you know, what you're doing to really preserve that data. And that really is when you think about technology, that's where it's at. The technology is cool, but the data that you can either extract from it or utilize or manipulate um, is really the power behind technology. You know, it's the most important asset that most companies have is their data and your ability to look at the data that you have, to understand it, to make it actionable. Uh, those things are all paramount. Uh, what my specific role was, was when SAP was coming into existence for a company, I had to get all of the data into it to where when they flipped the switch on day one, they could run their business. So yeah. not an easy thing. And what uh, that ended up 
giving me was a lot of experience in data modeling and understanding what the various aspects of business data are. You know, what's a customer? What's a ship to? What's a sale to? Uh, sale to what's a skew, all these various things. And uh, with that knowledge across industries such as aerospace, uh, biotech, chemicals, uh, just so many different things, uh, I ended up just with a, a wealth of knowledge about the data that exists within systems. Yeah. So talk, let's talk for a moment about my truck and tech and what you're doing uh, with my truck and tech, uh, who you're serving and what are some of the problems that you guys are trying to, to solve with that. And by the way, DJ, thanks for showing up, man. Always good to see you. Appreciate having you on the, uh, on the show. DJ says the scale at which you succeed is the depth of the problem that you solve. Uh, love that. So DJ, thanks for watching the show. But yeah. Talk a little bit for a moment, Rich, about my truck and tech, some of the problems that you're solving and where you're headed with that. Yeah. So uh, the, my truck and tech came out and, uh, as, as I mentioned before, it was based upon a, uh, asset carrier, a uh, friend of mine, he owns a substantial, uh, carrier here in the Fort Worth area. And originally he wanted to get away from truck stop scanning of proof of delivery and indexing documents and some of the stuff that, uh, the existing solutions in the market, uh, you know, just created a situation where there's a lot more work than the there needed to be. Yeah. So with that no, capability of just, sorry. No, go ahead. Keep going. Sorry. Yeah. We started with that capability just for basically document capture. And uh, we moved on to where uh, instead of just, you know, images coming through into an inbox, we even pre-categorized them. So you can see the difference in a, a lump of receipt versus a proof of delivery, uh, even versus maybe some OSND evidence. So we really started uh, with, with the problem that he had, and then we started working backwards. And I use a thing that's called a, like a bubble map. So we kind of start with what the need is in the middle, and then we start drawing bubbles around it to see all the other things that uh, could be a potential to drive some more uh, benefit. So it started with documents, and then we figured out, well, if the driver comes out of pocket, you know, they could attach a receipt where it would be easier for them to get paid back. And hey, if we give them a place that they could leave comments and ratings, that might give them uh, a voice where they didn't have one before and also benefit at the same time a carrier. So we really just started looking at all the various aspects and uh, coming up with more and more and more features that we've just been adding across the last couple of years. Yeah, no, it's, it's again, it's great to see just these problems that that you're finding with uh, with a customer and, and working to solve those problems, which, again, is just so critical when it comes to uh, when it comes to technology. When you think about building technology in general, what are some of your priorities and you know, what are some of the things that you really focus on? What's really important to you uh, when you're doing that? And how important is it also to have you know the ability to integrate with other platforms? Because, as you know, in transportation, technology is kind of such an antiquated kind of fragmented marketplace where you have one app that does tracking and you have one system that manages the freight and you've got another system that processes invoices or accounting. How important is it to, to think through integrations while you're building this technology and, and, and talk about that for a little bit? Sure. So uh, in answer to your first question, when we're designing uh, any app or any feature within an app, it starts about whether or not it's going to deliver ROI. So if we're not solving a problem, or reducing work or uh, doing some activity that's going to impact in a positive way the bottom line, then it's probably not the best feature to put in. So we start with that uh, hands down and really it's uh, working from what the problem is into what the solution is. So I think we touched on that a little bit, but you know we really don't, uh, just come up and say, oh man, we have the greatest thing ever in the world and it's gonna solve a bunch of problems that we don't even know if they exist. So a lot of it was just talking with the, uh, the carriers to see where their pain points were at and things that we could do within uh, one organization or another organization that would help streamline those activities. So for instance, the, the reimbursable receipt one ended up saving uh, 30 hours a month and the number of drivers that started getting paid back quicker, uh, it just really streamlined that entire workflow within the office and it made the drivers happier. 
That's a win win. Yeah, I mean, those are the things that we're looking for. <laughs> right. What a, what a great incentive for drivers to use the app uh, that you guys have built because they get paid faster, things get processed a lot faster. And, you know, drivers, I mean, they're, they're incredible human beings. They are some of the hardest working people out there to make their life easier and to help them get paid faster is a huge, you know, win-win uh, for drivers out there. Um, it's got to feel good to know that what you're doing is having a positive impact for the people who are some of the most essential workers out there who are doing some of the hardest jobs to make sure that the rest of us can go to the grocery store and, you know, get our toilet paper and our, you know, uh, whatever else that we want, make it so easy for us. It's got to feel good to know that what you're doing is helping those people out. I appreciate that. And it really does. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, if we have drivers that are having some kind of an issue that call in uh, part of our standard uh, method of just communicating with them is first and foremost to thank them every time. They're the ones that are keeping us all running. We wouldn't be anywhere without them. So <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. that's a huge deal. You yeah, should. I love the, I love the fact that you like that. That's really cool. Let's just talk about that for a minute because if you have drivers that call in or are having an issue, first of all, they're probably frustrated. Uh, they're probably you know not not necessarily excited about what's going on. But for you to start the entire conversation with a thank you, I think is huge. I don't think a lot of people when they think about customer service or how they treat people in general, whether it's a vendor or a customer or whoever it might be, a lot of times they forget that human element and they forget that aspect of of just saying thank you. When did that come into being for you in terms of how you wanted to run your business? I'm sorry. Could you repeat the question? You cut out for just a second. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. I apologize if the audio is bad. But my question was, you know, that's such a cool thing that you say thank you, that you make that a part of your process to thank them. When did that become a part of the way that you wanted to run business? Like, when, like how did that come about? It didn't really come about. It was just kind of there from the beginning. Um, you know, I'd see by going to the carrier site and seeing drivers coming through every day. And I mean, they're coming across the parking lot with their trip packs and they're, you know, dragging their feet through and knowing that they got to get the next shipment and get on the road again. And just the understanding of them being away from their families and really everything that they do so that, uh, you know, you, you have golf clubs back there. So you can go to the store and get some golf balls. You know, they came on a truck. Uh, everything that we need food wise. Uh, I don't know if we're still sitting on a uh, bankroll of toilet paper from the initial shutdown, but <laughs> you know, all of that stuff during the COVID was huge. We even uh, put a, a small app out that we tried to get some traction on when the shutdown came and the truck drivers were having a hard time getting food. It was a free app, but we noticed a couple of things where restaurants were having to close down and at the same time, truck drivers couldn't get food. So we put an app out in two and a half months working with FEMA and some other things where truck drivers could download the app and everybody drop a pin saying I'm hungry. And then these heat bubbles would show up where a restauranter could actually say, OK, we're not going to serve to our dining room. Let's load up the van. Let's keep our business going and let's go take food to where the truckers are since they can't get it. And it ended up being just a really fun project. Uh, everything started opening up before we got the traction that we wanted to. But the drivers were the first things in our head during the shutdown. Yeah, no, that's a really cool idea and app and, and solving a, pro, uh, a real need. What's interesting about drivers is that, you know, we talk about having a driver shortage in the industry. I don't know that we have a driver shortage because people don't want to drive. I think we have a driver shortage because we don't treat drivers very well. And like any human being, if you don't, if you don't have a good experience, you know, eventually you're going to be like, I'm going to do something else that's worth my time or I'm going to do you know, something else. So again, I love the fact that not only are you providing solutions, but you're also just treating them like humans. You're thanking them. You see a need and you think you can solve it. You try to solve it, you know, and that says a lot to your character and to who you are as a person. So kudos to that. And apparently our next, uh, my next episode, my, my next podcast needs to be on the golf course, according to Eric playing the guitar. That would be <laughs> weird, Eric. I'm not going to lie. I've never played guitar on the golf course. I've never mixed these two things together, but it might be worth uh, might be worth trying. Uh, but no, but Rich, that's really cool that you're that you're doing that. You're thinking about how can we help the drivers? How can we make their life better? Kudos to you, man. It's awesome. I appreciate that. Uh, one of the things that I enjoy the most is uh, through the application, we let the driver uh, say how their experience is when they first got there. You know, they're checking in. Uh, what the facility is like. We have five categories uh, that they can give it a, basically a star rating and then a place to leave comments. 
the comments are amazing <laughs> when you go through them. And, you know, I think that uh, the, the carriers benefit an incredible amount. Um, some of the data that we've seen actually supports a carrier dropping a lane. And, you know, they're looking at their own turnover. They're looking at that they sent a driver to this one place that's really troublesome, like 10 times more than their other drivers. And they just beat him into the ground. The next thing you know, he's gone. And they're going in here and reading all the notes that the driver was saying, in. please don't send me here again. There's no facilities. There's flies everywhere. There's, you know, whatever, whatever the comments are. And uh, it's really insightful that you can actually uh, look at one of your shippers or one of your receivers holistically. They might have 10 sites, be able to tell them, hey, here's what our drivers think. This is the worst one. So it's... Uh, Pretty cool. And I, I really feel like it gives the drivers a voice, especially by reading their comments myself. Yeah, I'm sure those comments could be pretty entertaining and enjoyable as well, but very educational. And DJ, <laughs> he's been checking out the he's been checking out the app while we're on the show. He says it's a killer app. Uh, he says you're not only good at barbecue, uh, but DJ, we definitely need to figure out a way to try some of the barbecue. I think that's that's <laughs> it goes without saying that we need to make we need to make that happen. That's for sure. So, Rich, you're uh, are you a Dallas Fort Worth native? Are you, did you grow up there? I was born in Dallas and moved to Fort Worth as soon as possible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as somebody who's not from the area, why is that? I don't know. What, what, why is that? Uh, Tell me, give, me, give me the argument Dallas from Fort Worth just, over Dallas. So Dallas is the hustle and bustle and uh, Fort Worth is the laid back side. Ah, okay. You can okay. almost tell so, when you cross in, into Dallas that everybody's driving 90 over in Fort Worth. It's a much easier drive. Just go down the highway. I mean, it's uh, just a, okay. a real difference, just kind of in the overall mentality. Interesting. Okay, because I've never, I've never been to Fort Worth for very long. I've driven through it. Um, I, there was a stint in my life where I lived in Abilene, Texas, okay. and you can actually, maybe you can verify this for, for everybody out there. But this is amazing to me. When you were driving down a two lane road in Texas, all right, and you come up behind a vehicle, like maybe you're driving fast in that vehicle. What I noticed in Texas is that vehicle without stopping, we'll just pull over onto the shoulder, keep driving and let you pass. I had yes. never seen that anywhere before until I got to Texas. Is that a Texas thing? It is in more of the rural areas. Um, if yeah. there's two lanes, not so much, but uh, definitely I, it's really kind of a country thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I believe yeah. maybe that maybe was it. I, I, saw it I don't know if yeah. this is the origins of it, but it wasn't uncommon in, in the rural areas to see, a tractor going down the road, you know, with the hay bales moving right, stuff, right. and you just kind of get used to to moving out of the way and letting traffic go. And uh, I guess when it also comes to some of the people that are probably from Dallas, especially that are driving out in the country, not the most patient to people. So I no, guess it's probably that person myself. That's right. And yeah. That, that was probably me, but I remember that being like that. That was really cool. The fact they just pull over and they wave to you like, Hey, no big deal. But that Howdy. would never fly in my part of the, my neck of the woods uh, in terms of that people, it, there's a road rage that happens as a result of that. So I thought that was a really cool reflection of Texas and the culture down there. And it sounds like Fort Worth kind of carries that kind of carries that culture of just laid back and, you know, taking care of people and, and that kind of thing. So that's good to know, actually, I've never been down there, but that's good to know. That's really Some cool. great places in downtown Fort Worth. Definitely. What's the best barbecue joint to go to in Fort Worth? Uh, my house. Okay, outside of your house, what's <laughs> the best barbecue joint to go to in Fort Worth? You know, I don't go to them. My wife won't. What she really uh, would rather me cook it. So uh, <laughs> I think that Eric Rios popped up. Eric, give us yours. <laughs> Yeah, does Eric have a spot? I don't know. Hopefully, he's got a spot. Well, that's, that's a good spot. I'm just asking because we're going to be down there in October. And, you know, again, we're going to try your barbecue. We're going to work that out. But there might be a, a, a second night that we might need to go get barbecues. So I'm just curious. I, where I, I, I will have you some names coming. Nice. Looking forward to that. So we'll, we'll get those out there. That's we're going to find the best of the best. That's right. Are you a Cowboys fan? Yes, sir. There you are. Look at that. Oh, they make I, it I missed the hat. Every year. Every year they make it difficult. <laughs> but, uh, now, if you do want to take a little bit of a road trip south of Fort Worth, you could go down to Franklin's Barbecue. Okay. It's going to be about two and a half hours away. Aaron Franklin is world's best brisket guy ever. Did you say 10 and a half hours away? Two and a half. Two and a half hours. Okay. Well, that's, okay. It's, that's the reason. Okay. Mike Eggleton says Cooper's and Hein. Is that, are those, are those joints? Are those, are those uh, barbecue joints in, uh, in, in Fort Worth? Cooper's and Hein? 
or no? I've never been there. Okay. Well, we'll have to look that but, up. But so Mike you, you, you can, you can trust Mike. Okay. We'll, get we'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to get, uh, we'll have to get those locations down. Yeah. And Eric says his house. So we've got several options here. I'm excited about this. These are not public establishments, but we might be getting a hookup with some barbecue down in Fort Worth when we're down there, which is great. Well, the reason I ask is because we're looking at going to a Cowboys game, but you know, it's interesting being a Cowboys fan. They do make it difficult on you. You know, there's a lot of hope at the beginning of the season. You got good players. I mean, you know, you got some really good players out there, but for some reason, er, it just kind of doesn't uh, doesn't always work out. So, what's that like being a Cowboys fan, and how does that teach you loyalty? You know what? Uh, you have to have loyalty if you're a Cowboys fan, no doubt about it. It has to be ingrained in your entire soul. And somehow or another, uh, I know a bunch of people from Texas. Some of them have been on the uh, on the the podcast today, but. Uh, very few cowboy fans. Go figure. <laughs> oh no, that's crazy. Yeah, well, like okay. a... We have some confirmation real quick. So Lisa says that Cooper's old time in the stockyards. Okay, so that's good. Thank you for the context. That's good <laughs> to know. Gonna have to go check that out when we're down there, Lisa. Appreciate you saying that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to go to a Cowboys game. I'm a Chiefs fan. We went through a long stretch of disappointment. Uh, they made it really hard for us because you know we won Super Bowl four, and that was it. That was a long time ago. And then finally. We won a couple of years ago with Mahomes, but prior to that, it was kind of the same thing. You know, some hope, some good players for along the way, and but never could quite get over the finish line. So, you know, maybe the Cowboys. This is their year. You never know. Well, I have no dislove for uh, Casey either. So, yeah. Well, and, and, and Patrick RNA. Mahomes is a Texas Tech boy. I mean, he you know, Daddy he's, is. He, he's, he's he's from that area. So you got to you know, if you if you can't root for the Cowboys to win, if they're not in it, you can root for the Chiefs and, and Mahomes. So. We've got some. Uh, we've got, uh, maybe the maybe Dallas will be my NFC team this year. I'll have to put them up there at the top, which would be great. All right. So, Rich, listen. So this goes by super fast every day. We're yeah, pretty much does. getting close to the to the end. What are some things maybe you have on the horizon? Do you have anything you want to share? Some thoughts that you're thinking about, or where do you go from here? Like, what's uh, what's uh, what's the goal moving forward? Well, uh, the the current goal is is that we have our data platforms that have really been maturing uh, across the last few years and. Uh, we've really built out uh, what I feel like is a solution that contains several features that would benefit companies. And, uh, you know, we're really just to the point that the platforms have matured to where we're ready to actively start getting out there and penetrating the market. So, you know, uh, I really appreciate, appreciate you having me on uh, to build that brand awareness. You've already been a wealth of knowledge to me. And, you know, I saw DJ out there, uh, those guys and, uh, Chris Jolly, it's been, you know, just really neat hearing uh, all the information that's trucking specific, but at the same time, uh, sales and marketing focus. So, uh, you know, the, this is wonderful, just helping us get the brand out there. And that's really what's on the short list is for us to get this thing uh, off and running. Yeah, well, happy to have you on. Always good to chat. I know that we had a great conversation the first time that we we met, and uh, just liked what you were doing and your attitude towards it and your focus. What's the best way for you know people and for companies to learn about what you're doing about my truck and tech and to get started? So uh, we actually have a lot of information out there on the website, which is uh, my trucking with no g dot tech, and then on the data side, which I uh, want to definitely emphasize this. Uh, our data services also can benefit trucking industries as well as others. So uh, there's some neat things that we can do with that. And that's simply datanow.com. Very cool. So my truck and that, our contact information is on there and definitely hit me up on LinkedIn uh, if you like. And uh, always looking forward to, to making new contacts in the industry and uh, you know, glad to talk to anybody. Very cool. So my truck and tech, uh, my truck and dot tech. Yep. And then the other one is datanow.com. Is that right? Simply datanow.com. Simply datanow. Ah, I missed that. You know, it's, it's actually tricky when you say it like that because you could just say, you know, it's like, it's, also, it's almost like saying just basically it's datanow.com, but simply datanow.com. Got it. Yeah. So we got those up there. So make sure you guys reach out to mytrucking.tech or simply data.now or follow Rich Hankins on LinkedIn to learn more about what they're doing for drivers, which again, I'm all about promoting things for drivers and helping them out. Those, those are the ones that are making everything possible, you know, for us uh, and make our lives so stinking easy. So we appreciate that. And make sure that you guys come back tomorrow for episode 73 
of uh, the show with my friend Dan McCann. We're going to talk about sim train and the value of training and onboarding. That's going to be so exciting. Um, and thanks everybody for watching, for, for participating. Be sure to follow us and share this episode so other people can, uh, can check out the episodes with great people like Rich as well. And we'll see all of you back here tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. Central for episode 73 of Standing Out, a daily podcast about sales, marketing, and leadership. Rich, thanks for being on the show, man. We'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Have a good weekend.